Hey there, Ben Lipper here. Welcome to Coding Academy. And today I want to teach you how to code this guy. Now you're like, Ben, I don't have this guy. This robot is basically a model robot that most likely nobody built, but it is coded the exact same way as if you have Huey. You're going to use the same exact coding techniques on it, like literally block for block. If you have Clawbot, you're going to use the same coding techniques. If you have Pinhead, um, which is basically this robot, but instead of a claw, you're actually gonna have like some wheels up here that are picking up the pins. That's gonna be coded exactly the same way as well. Um, and then there's a few just other generic robots that look similar that either have one elevator or one arm and claw on the front. They're all gonna be coded the same. So I figured I'm gonna show you this robot just because it's a good example. And then you're gonna be able to modify it or really not modify it and use the same exact code on anything else that you have. So here we go, let's go to dive into it. Let me just explain real quick what this robot is. And then maybe you'll kind of, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see why this robot is so similar. So first of all, this is a standard drivetrain. We're gonna have two motors on the bottom here. It does not matter if you gear up your drivetrain. I will show you what to do if you do that and it like ends up reverse. That's super easy to remedy. But it, this is a one-to-one -one drivetrain. So if you've got a standard drive base, that's awesome. If you've got a geared up drive base, I'll show you how to code that as well. It's coded exactly the same way. There's just one button you might have to click. So that's the same. Um, this is the arm. So the arm is driven here by this one motor. And all that you're doing here is the one motor spins uh, these sprockets, whatnot. Uh, or sorry, gears, not sprockets. It spins these gears. Arm goes up and down just like so. And as a result, this is the same exact thing as if you had Huey. You have one motor that is spinning it. Now, if you have two motors, say that, you know, instead I'd added a second motor on here. I'll show you how to do that also. It's called the motor group. And then the claw on this robot, pretty straightforward. We've got, it opens and closes. It's driven by one motor right here, and that's opening and closing the claw. Sweet. So that being said, without further ado, I say we get into VexCode. Anytime you start up a new project, the first thing you will always do is hit this devices button up here and get your devices set up. Now, the first step is to go ahead and figure out if you have a first or second generation brain. Um, as you can kind of see just based on that picture. What you do is you look at it and if it looks like this on the home screen or anything remotely like this where there's like colors, like there's blues and there's greens and like the screen is clearly a color display just like a phone or cell phone screen, then you have a Gen 2 brain. If you have a screen that is monochrome, meaning it kind of looks like a calculator display almost with a backlight and like either it's on or it's off, but there's like obviously not greens and blues and, and stuff here. It's just kind of like this dull blue or like dull black color, that's Gen 1. So we got Gen 2 here, we're ready to go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Gen 2. It gives me a little bit more functionality when I do that. Um, hit two motor drive because that's what we got here. And then it's time to play spaghetti. If you've ever done those maze books where you're like, you know, like you, you do all the mazes and that's great. And then you get to the one maze where it's just like, um, there's like, you know, I don't know, four things up here and four things down here. And you're trying to match them. It's just like massive spaghetti between them. That's what we're doing now, except for in real life. So here we go. These are our two drive motors. I'm going to follow this wire, trace it up. And it looks like it's plugged into port one. Um, my other drive motor is plugged into port six. So this is how you figure it out. We have to figure out which one's on the left, which one's on the right. Because I'm like, all right, well, obviously this one's on the left, this is on the right. Then you flip it around, and you're like, oh dear, now this one's left, this one's right. What do I do? How do you fix this? What you do is you put, point the robot and imagine you're sitting in it. Like, say you're sitting right here in the driver's seat. Now figure out which one's left and right. So it's called driver's perspective. I'm going to sit right here. This one is on my left. This one's on my right. So this, port one, is going to be my left motor. Port six will be my right motor. So let's go ahead and code that here. Port one, I said, was going to be my left motor. Right is, or six is my, well, right motor on six, left motor on one, no gyro. You never want a gyro. Now, again, if you geared up your drive, you might end up needing to reverse this. You might not. So I'll show you that later. Um, but basically, if your drivetrain is all reversed, you'll just hit this button right here and that'll reverse it for you. And we'll hit done. Now, you're doing great. Now the next step is to go ahead and add our claw. So I'm gonna add our claw. Our claw is driven by a motor. That motor is plugged into port four. I've just done my spaghetti thing real quick for you. I'm gonna call this my claw that will open and close. Done. And then I actually also have an arm. Now this is where things get interesting. My arm has one motor. You can see that right here. Arm with just one motor on it, that's all I needed. Now, some people have an arm with two motors. If you do, you're gonna do something a little bit different. But I'm going to add my arm as a motor, and then, you know, I'd say uh, my arm is plugged in on port 5. I'm going to call this arm. 
and my arm, it goes up and down. Good. Now, if you have a two motor arm unit at a motor group, um, say it's on two and three, right? Remember there's two motors. And this, you know, I'd call this arm, you can call it whatever you want. We'll call it arm. And then you go, my arm goes up and down. Now, this is really important. You always have to reverse a motor with a motor group. I can't tell you how many teams are like, my arm doesn't work. And it's like, well, you didn't reverse one of the motors. One and only one will always be reversed. Which one, you ask? That's for you to figure out. But which one, it depends on the robot. One will always be reversed, though. So I've got one motor reversed. Now, say, you know, I do my testing. I discover it's not right. What do you do? You reverse the other motor. You don't do this. This is bad, and then this is also bad. You got to do one and not the other. Perfect, so we're good to go there. We're just gonna add one more device, add our controller. This is where things get fun. You are going to go ahead and click this and decide how you wanna drive the robot. There's left stick, there's right stick. This is my personal favorite. This is split arcade. Here's the other split arcade. And here's tank drive. So I personally like this one, that's my go-to. And then we're gonna code everything else. So my arm, for example, I'm gonna throw up here. My claw is gonna go right there. And I think we're good to go, done. Now you say, Ben, we're done, right? Not quite so fast. Here's what we got to do. We have to make sure all our motors are going the right direction. Um, I haven't even tested drive yet. And I'm going to show you one other thing that's probably going to, you're probably going to run into. So we're getting linked up. Oh, come on. You had it. Download. So here you are, you got a cute little robot, right? It's going up and down. Let's go ahead and run our code. And, oh, it worked, all right. So here we go, here's forward, here's backward, here's turn, here's turn. Now, say your drive is not working the way it should. Mine did the first time, I can push it forward, it goes forward, backward, it goes backward, turn, and turn, it works. Now, say your drive doesn't work the first time. Test all of them, test forward and backward. If forward and backward are reversed, Check turning. If turning and if everything's reversed, forward, backward, and turning are all reversed, that's actually super easy to fix. All you need to do is come in a drivetrain, click that button right there. That's going to go ahead and reverse it for you. Now, say that you find only one of them's reversed. That's bad news. That means you did not get your left and right set up correctly, and your left and right motors are swapped. So, how do you do that? You can obviously plug and unplug them. The easier way to do it, though, in my opinion, is actually just come in here. Go drivetrain. I'm gonna switch my one motor, it has to be on six. Can't click that now, so I'll throw it on 12 temporarily. This one is supposed to be one. Come back here, set this to six. Um, and then now we're done. So obviously that was not correct for me. I gotta go fix that again. Um, oops, six and one. But that's what you do if not everything's reversed. Like say just turning is reverse or just forward backwards reverse, but the other one's correct. That's what you do um, in that case. Now, we didn't finish testing things though. That was just the drivetrain. Now let's go to test some other things. I've got arm up. Ooh, my arm's going down. Do you see that? And it can't even hold itself down. So I've got two issues going on here. First, my arm is reversed. When I push up, it goes down, and down it goes up. And then also, when it gets to the bottom, it can't even hold itself down. I got these rubber bands, but I'm pulling it up. That's not good. So here's how you fix it. First, I'm gonna go into my arm, reverse that. Now, again, if this was a motor group, you'd change which one's reversed. Remember, both will not be reversed and neither won't be reversed. It's going to be one of them will be reversed. Just change the one that's reversed. Sweet. So we're good to go there. Additionally, I saw two things. First, I saw my arm was going slowly. I'm going to set my arm's velocity to 100%. I'm also going to set my arm's stopping mode to hold. That's going to make it so that, let's download this code. That's going to make it so that now, watch this. Up goes up, down goes down. That rubber band can't spring it either. So we're good there. Now let's check our claw. This should be open. This should be closed. Claws reversed as well. So you guys know the deal. Go ahead, jump in here. Uh, claw, reverse, boom. And then I'm gonna do the same things for my claw because I can tell my claw, here, I'll show you. 
claw, look, see, it's like all floppy. It tries to grab a pen, there's no hope. It'll grab a pen and it'll immediately drop it. So, set my claw. Stopping to. There we go. Download. And actually, this is just me being picky. There's no functionality change that happens, but I like it to look like that. Sweet. Let's go ahead and check out how this robot's doing. So, run that code. Forward, backward, turn, turn, down, close, oops, close, up, stack, and release. Back away. All right, so that is that. That is how you code um, basically any robot like this. So it could be Pinhead, um, it could be uh, Huey, it could be Clawbot, it could be any of those. It's gonna be coded the exact same way as this one. You've got an arm or an elevator and you've got a claw driven by a motor. If you need a claw driven by pneumatics, you're gonna wanna go ahead and check out Scorpion. I've got a tons and tons of resources on how to code pneumatics. Um, and there I've even got a whole pneumatics video, but check out the Scorpion unit, that's gonna explain things. Um, if you're doing Pinhead and you're like, hey Ben, this is great, but I want a little bit more, go and check out Backlash. Backlash has some cool uh, intake controls that you can actually throw on your intake, um, the, like conveyor controls that you can throw on your intake, and that also works really well too. So totally up to you. Like I said before though, go ahead, click the link under this video, even if you don't need it now, you're like, Ben, my robot's working. Click the link anyway, get all the resources. That way when you need my coding academy, when you have any issues, you're able to just go hop in there, you'll have answers immediately, and you'll be able to access all of my videos. So again, totally free. Please make sure you take advantage of this. This is like really good stuff. Other than that though, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead, like and subscribe, and I cannot wait to see what you build this year.